<laughs> hi, 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 and hey, hey, and welcome to another edition of Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. This is the show that we do every two weeks here on YouTube, every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, this is a show where we talk exclusively about the solo careers of the Beatles. Once in a while, we might do a topic on the group, but most of the time, it's on the solo careers of John, Paul, George, and Ringo. I'm Ken Michaels, and I do hope you're familiar with some of the other shows that I do. There's a syndicated Beatles radio show called Every Little Thing, heard on about 50 radio stations. There's also another talk show podcast, bi-weekly as well, called Things We Said Today, which covers... The group and the solo careers uh, of the Beatles and my own YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels Radio, where it's all conversations on the Beatles. And I'm being joined on Talk More Talk by my three regulars, my colleagues here, my esteemed colleagues that I'm so fond of. And I enjoy every couple of weeks getting together and having a fascinating, robust conversation with these three people. You like that word, didn't you, Tom? Nice, nice choice of words. Nice. <laughs> I like it. Robust. Let's uh, welcome on, first of all, Kit O'Toole. You know Kit as the queen of Beatles social media. She's also the author of songs who were singing guided tours through the Beatles' lesser-known tracks and Michael Jackson FAQ, All That's Left to Know About the King of Pop. She's also co-host of another Beatles podcast, The Four of Us All Over the Place. And Kit has another show, which is called, I'm forgetting it. Top, <laughs> top of Most of the, the Poppermost. Pop I kept thinking Top of the Pops, but no. Yep. Top of most of the Very pop close, very course, close. You know, from what the Beatles used to say to each other when they would encourage each other encourage each other in their early years. So we're going to the Top of Most of the Poppermost. Mm -hmm. And she also is busy uh, online with all kinds of special programs that she does uh, on specific albums uh on motown uh she's all over the place and uh she's such a great person to work with we love having her here hi kit hi ken tom joe hello everybody out there hey, kit. gonna be a good time tonight some fun tonight mm -hmm. <laughs> we also have tom Hunyadi, who is one half of the team of two legs along with annie nichols for that podcast which is all about paul mccartney's career and uh, that show is always busy with new shows all the time. Always great to welcome him to this show for his insights and his own observations. Hello, Tom. Hello, Ken. Good to see you. Good to see Joe and Kit and everybody out there watching. Hope you guys have a good time tonight because I think we will. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we also have Joe Mayo with us, who is also known as Mean Mr. Mayo with his own YouTube channel, which is so popular. Been around for a long, long time. Is it over? It's over 10 years, right? It's going on 12, yeah. Okay. Seems like two. Okay. You know? <laughs> Time flies. Uh, but he does all kinds of stuff on his channel. Lots of conversations about the Beatles. Lots of conversations on movies. He does his Fab Gab feature. And he does his own rants, too. He covers the whole gamut. Yeah. You know, anything Lots of rants. Mind, Joe is on the pulse of it all. And uh, Joe, great to have you with us again. Thanks, Ken. Glad to be here, although a little under the weather. And hello, Kit. Hello, Tom. Hello, all out there in television okay, land. Tonight, we're going to have a fun show. They're all fun shows. <laughs> but just with the Rolling Stone put <clears> a, a countdown. Me. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you can mute yourself, too. When that happened, uh, it didn't work. I realized <laughs> it, as I was coughing, I realized, oh shit, it's not on. So, Rolling Stone magazine put out uh, a countdown of uh, their top 100 solo Beatles songs. Actually, Rob Sheffield, right? And um, ever since that countdown came out a lot of people said you know you should do a show on this and i just love the fact that first of all the solo careers are being addressed this way yes and covering all yeah. the decades from the beginning right up to today and i'm sure that everyone who has seen this list 
um being Beatle fans, we're all opinionated. We're all going to agree with some choices. We're all going to disagree with some choices. But I thought we'd have some fun uh, tackling this. And we were talking before the show, 100 songs is a lot to go through. Mm. If we went one by one by each song, we'd be here till Christmas. So <laughs> I thought maybe we should split it up into two and tackle songs 100 through 51 tonight and the next show that we do from 50 to number one. And we're going to do uh, the songs in groups of 10 and ask everyone here on our panel what they think of those 10 songs. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit in detail about those groups of 10 songs till we get to 51. But there's plenty to say about those. And uh, it's a fascinating list and we'll be talking to it, talking about it very soon. We'll also get to Beatle News in just a few minutes, but I thought it might be fun. Uh, on the show tonight, since this uh, Rolling Stone article uh, delves with songs, uh, solo Beatles songs and their top 100, to do something real quick and brief and for each of us to list our top three solo Beatles songs. So mm. um, that's really a tough job considering <laughs> all the material that the four of them have put out all these years. So why don't we start with the Queen? What are your top Three songs from three to one. Okay. Well, I mean, these are songs that I think, you know, don't get enough attention. And and I was kind of surprised that uh, that they weren't on the list. Um, so uh, number three, uh, Ringo um, song, I don't think gets enough credit, uh, Spooky Weirdness. Um, you know, really avant-garde. And, and um, you know, I just don't think it, it really gets enough uh, mention. Um, number two uh, from... Uh, John, um, Yaya. I mean, you know, Yaya is just sort of a masterpiece, and and I don't know why that that doesn't get enough mention. Yeah. And uh, and number one, uh, that just inspired remix of P.S. Love Me Do. I mean, you oh, know, yeah. it's such a it's such a, a banger. A and and I just you know, it it just a, an absolute instant classic. I don't know why that doesn't yeah. get should have been a number one. Should have been a number one. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, really. I mean, it's so catchy and everything. Exactly, exactly. You agree, I like your list. Thank you for picking those, Kit. Mm -hmm. One question, Yeah, Yeah, which version of Yeah, Yeah? Uh, the one on the Rock and Roll album. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. No, oh, I no much prefer the one on Walls and Bridges. I think that's really a lot better. Yeah, that's true. It's hard to pick. Hard to pick. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Tom. Well, you know, we all know Ringo is famous for some great covers. Uh, I think the, the 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 cover of all cover from Ringo is, uh, you know, Where Did Our Love Go? I think that one is just, uh, you know, he sings it beautifully. And uh, it's a it, great production on that one. I mean, it's really his vocals is what uh, is top notch for me. Um, I mean, I've, I've said many a times that I'm a big fan of autotune on this show. And uh, Paul was... <laughs> What are you guys laughing at? I, hey, I, I, you know, I, don't see what's Paul, I mean, I mean, get enough. I mean, is I mean, just Paul is brilliant. The brilliant use of auto tune on on that track. Uh, but but again, you know, I love the second half of that too. But but the, yeah, the the auto tune on on get enough. And and how can you criticize the wonderful silence of Natopian International Anthem? Is, is just. Oh, well. You know, really? I mean, you really can't put any words on it. It's a masterpiece. You know? Yeah, it's it's oh, really, really just a brilliant. You know, no, really and truly, yeah. that's it was a copy of of two minutes yeah. of silence. Yeah, it's a cheaper version if you really want. Uh -huh. one. Yeah, correct. Right. Yep. Yeah. Very good selections there, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Joe. All right. Well, um, you all know if you watch my channel how much I love. George's extra texture albums, but uh, it was hard to like pick uh, a favorite because there's so many. Uh, I decided to go with his name is Legs is my number three. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the greatest solo accomplishments by any of the. the oh, people. that came so close. From my yeah, list. Uh, his name is Ladies and Gentlemen. Let's you know in parentheses. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, this is a Paul McCartney forgotten classic, and I don't understand for the life of me why it doesn't get more love. I used to have it on a bootleg. Then it came out as a bonus track. All You Horse Riders. That's one of my very favorite Paul masterpieces. That's unsung. Okay. Right. That's mm -hmm. really a catchy little ditty there. 
And I, you know, there's so we know this. There's so many great solo songs that it's impossible to come out with number one. But after after really putting my brain through it, I got one with Ringo of all people, and uh, he's got a guest on here too. It's Who's Your Daddy? Oh, I think I really think with Josh Stone. I mean, that is second to none as far as Ringo's solo career is concerned. I mean, why did why wasn't that a hit? And it's it's just know. so hot. It really yeah. is. It really is. Yeah. Well, you know, there there could be poor choices for singles. You know, mm-hmm. that one just leaps out at you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, excellent choices all around. All right, Tim, yeah. I cannot wait to hear what you have. I know. My number three choice was <laughs> a bit more of you. <laughs> hey, man. What's so? I don't know why the guy's laughing. It's, yeah, these are great songs. I, I got the sillies tonight. I don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, don't know why. But, um, yeah. We all know you. The song you could be a bit yeah. overindulgent. Yes, so I think a bit, a bit more of you is just what you need. Right. It's got all the essential ingredients. Very concise to the point. That's what you need hmm. for uh, for that song. And I also, well, I'm in agreement with you. Uh, well, partly, uh, Kit, with Yaya, but I wanted the version with Julian Lennon drumming on there. That's mm. true. That's that is. I I take it back. That is the preferred version. It doesn't go on too long either. No, yeah. not at all. No, it's just the right length and everything. And everybody was waiting to see father and son together. And and Julian proved that uh, you know he had the chops there at a very mm-hmm. young age, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So my number one choice. Um, it, it's so played out at this point. Is um, Gat Kirwani from uh, Wonderwall Music? Oh, 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 okay. oh, oh, I don't recognize that right away. That's a oh. banger. Oh. <laughs> Ten. Yeah. So when you when you talk about great uh, Indian tracks, right hmm. there between the tabla and the sitar playing so fast, Gat Kirwani, you, you can't. Wow. Be- Mm. Wonderwall has always been an inspiration to me. I just find so much power within the, in that album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, just fantastic, great choice. Absolutely. Okay. All right, there we are. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> now what? April Fools! April Fools! April Fools! <laughs> For some people, anyway. <laughs> yeah. He hadn't guessed already. <laughs> some people are guessing in the comments. Yeah, I think some people guessed in the comments. <laughs> the comments. <laughs> I hope he fooled somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I could keep a straight face through anything. And once Tom got me with Where Did Our Love Go, it's, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was going to use that, but I was afraid to, for that reason. I thought you were going to be left. <laughs> I know it's one of your fa- favorites. I was going to use Gratitude, too, maybe, but. Mm-hmm. Oh, you would. None of us. <laughs> No, none, none of us said Magneto Entertainment, man. I oh, almost a, did. Well, I almost did, song. and then I thought, nah, people will guess right away this is an April Fool's yeah. joke if I said <laughs> Magneto Entertainment, man. Oh, God. It turned <laughs> into Harvey Corman there. Yeah. <laughs> I really thought that I could keep a straight face through the whole thing, but I was worse than any of you. <laughs> <laughs> you were and, silent and- throughout the whole thing. And let me tell you, folks, before we were on, people they were saying, oh, Kit, you're going to laugh. You're not going to be able to continue. You're, <laughs> you're the one that's going to break. Notice I didn't. Yes, that's right. I you didn't. didn't. I, thought, I don't know why I thought you were going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, that was fun. All the news that fits. I got I to gotta practice having a poker face. And just... Yeah. <laughs> I really thought I could pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So let's get to the latest Beatle news. Uh, now, we've been giving you the release date for the McCartney Legacy Volume 2 as December 10th, which, as it stands at the moment, is the date. But I'm happy to say that you can now pre-order the book on Amazon. Mm. In fact, Alan Cozen told me it became the number one new release yeah. for rock books on Amazon's list. Okay, so let's keep it at number one from now through December and even after that. Make it like the Beatles were on the charts. 
you know, number <laughs> one with Meet the Beatles, number two, Introducing the Beatles. So we'll have McCartney Legacy 2 at the top and Volume 1 right below that, okay? There you go. The Beatles classic song Blackbird from the White Album has just been covered by Beyonce for her new album of country music, Cowboy Carter. But it's more than just a cover. She actually is using Paul's acoustic guitar playing from the original Beatles recording for her version. Have you guys heard it? Yeah. Not yet. No, I yes. haven't heard it. I, it's really good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it should be noted that um, others that are singing background and uh, and are singing and at least one other that's that sings some of the lyrics. They are also uh, African-American um, mm -hmm. uh, female country singers. So she's also making a point. Uh, right. Seeing it. And I should also say uh, the rest of the album is quite good. It's not just it. I would say it's country ish. It's it's not like a hoedown country sure. album. It's it's different. You know, it's not like traditional country it's it's mixed in with other genres and uh and it's very good i would absolutely recommend checking it out mm. okay yeah. yeah the harmonies are really nice on that version beautiful and you know i'm i really think cover versions of beatles and solo beatle material is very important and especially if it's someone as huge as beyonce mm -hmm. it's going to be introducing the song to a whole new generation of of her fans so Absolutely. that's really important when someone like that does that yeah mm -hmm. yeah i can see all of her fans going who is this mccartney guy <laughs> yeah. exactly well, yeah. People, yeah. Fans, you know. people have been talking about it that's i didn't know you know i've heard people talking about it so it's yeah, a good thing. exactly that's a nice cover be something if that was a single mm -hmm. would be something that, became, that would be something yes mm -hmm. very good tom Yep. The Sun is reporting that Paul McCartney has rewarded the East Sussex family who returned his lost Hopner base uh, for a hefty six-figure sum. It was given to Kathy Guest, who found the instrument in her loft. It comes after weeks of negotiations with Paul's music company, MPL. The base is said to be worth 10 million pounds, which I'm wow. thinking is about $15 million, mm -hmm. I think. Just released on paperback is a new book called 55 Iconic Beatles Songs Discussed by Celebrated Musicians by Frederick Ullmanhorst. Certain artists, including Phil Collins, Michael Jackson, Eddie Van Halen, Frank Sinatra, Mick Jagger, Brian May, Pat Metheny, Sting, and others share their rec recollections, insights, and stories about their favorite Beatles songs. You can enjoy surprising facts ab about who likes which Beatles songs and why. The new book, All You Need Is Love, The Beatles in Their Own Words, unpublished, unvarnished, and told by the Beatles and their inner circle, comes from two familiar names, Peter Brown and Stephen Gaines. Peter Brown was the former COO at the Beatles company Apple, and the two of them collaborated on the book, The Love You Make. The book, the new one, is comprised of interviews that were done for The Love You Make, which that book only included a small portion of all the material collected. The authors conducted interviews with Paul, Yoko, George, Ringo, wife Cynthia, Maureen, and Patty, as well as major social and business figures in the Beatles' inner circle. This book comes out next week, April the 9th. Hmm. Another book coming out this year is called Off the Ground, Paul McCartney in the 1990s by J.R. Moores. Amazon describes it as a, a sympathetic but clear-eyed exploration of Paul McCartney's work in the 1990s, arguably, they say, his most important since the rise of the Beatles. That book is due out November the 12th. Now, uh, just a few weeks ago, an updated version of the Beatles' Monopoly game was released to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the Beatles' debut on The Ed Sullivan Show. Oops. <laughs> Uh-oh. You didn't like my reporting that, did no. you? No! <laughs> the Op Games, that's the name of the company, unveiled a revamped edition of the Beatles' Monopoly, complete with customized artwork highlighting various Beatle albums. And legendary career moments such as the band sold out show at the Hollywood Bowl in 1964. Weren't you saying online, Kit, that you were considering getting this? Uh, I'm I'm very torn. I I'm not sure. 
<laughs> I'm I'm still torn about it. I don't know because yeah. I have an earlier version of the Monopoly game, so yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of torn about the updated version. It's, it's it's too bad we all don't live closer together. You know, we can get along, get our you know, get together. Yeah, you know, have game a few night. Drinks. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Yeah, what is what is the equivalent of um, Boardwalk? You know, I forget because I actually never opened it. <laughs> I was debating whether it was going to be a collector's item or not. So, uh, so I honestly don't know. <laughs> Must be like Abbey Road or something. It, I think it is. I think it is. Okay. Now, on July 28th, a special event will be happening in which the Pete Best Band and the Circle will be performing at the Valley Dale Ballroom in Columbus, Ohio. It's actually a full day packed with events. There'll be a lecture first with Pete Best and his brother Rogue discussing Pete's years in the Beatles at 2.30, followed by a meet and greet at 4. The Circle will perform at 6 p.m. and the Pete Best Band at 7.15. And then a merchandise sale and an autograph signing with Pete Best and or The Circle. There are pricing levels for each event and also an all-day pass. If you're interested, you can visit this website valleydaleballroom.com that's spell out valley then dale d-a-l-e ballroom.com the circle of course toured with the beatles in the united states in 1966 and the circle's new album revival was just released on uh, a few weeks ago actually and it's available to order at bigsterrecords.com don daneman is still with the group and he was a guest at uh, the fest for beatle fans last year as a matter of fact yes Billboard is reporting that the 64th edition of the celebrated book fair, ABAA New York International Antiquarian Book Fair, returns to Manhattan's Park Avenue Armory from April 4th through the 7th. The book fair boasts a rare piece of Beatlemania, an early draft of Paul McCartney's handwritten lyrics for Lovely Rita. This was on a piece of paper torn from a spiral notebook, and it includes Paul's first go at the lyrics in black ink as well as Paul's later revisions in Blue Ink. He changed writing all the numbers in her little black book to filling in a ticket with her little blue pen, both of which he didn't use. Biblio Octopus Rare Books will bring the item to the fair with an asking price of $650,000. Also for the Beatle fan, there is artwork by the Dutch art collective known as The Fool, that the Beatles commissioned for the Sgt. Pepper album, and that happens to be signed by Ringo Starr. If you need more information, go to NY for New York, nyantiquarianbookfair.com. Uh, more about auctions here. Uh, Julian's Auctions are holding a big auction of Tony Bennett's paintings and belongings. One of the items is a book with sheet music for the songs he did on his first duets album, and Paul signed the one that he appeared on with Tony, The Very Thought of You. Other names signed are Barbara Streisand, James Taylor, Elton John, Billy Joel, Elvis Costello, and Stevie Wonder in Braille with his fingerprints. If you're interested, go to this website, Julian's Live. Dot com. Julian's is J U L I E N. Julian's with an S live.com. Look for lot number 66. Special thanks to Kiddo Tool Notes, it says here, for this information. <laughs> it all came from Kit. Yeah. Thank you, Kit. <laughs> Just a few more items here. Uh, last week, an online auction ended uh, of uh, a trove of letters, photos, and items owned by Patty Boyd, surpassing all expectations. Christie said the online sale of the Patty Boyd collection sold for around 2.82 million pounds, roughly $3.6 million, roughly seven times the pre-sale high estimate of around 380,000 pounds. There were 111 lots up for sale, including affectionate letters from her rock husband, husbands, George Harrison and Eric Clapton, along with clothing, jewelry, drawings, and photographs, some of Patty, some by Patty. The biggest individual sale was the original artwork that Clapton chose for the front cover of the Derek and the Dominoes Layla album, which sold for two million pounds. That's two and a half million dollars. 33 times the pre-sale estimate. 
Wow. Speaking of Patty, we send out happy birthday wishes to her. She turned the big 8-0 on uh, March the 17th. In an interview with American songwriter Danny Harrison, who just released his first new album in six years, Inner Standing, said he plans on releasing a video from two concerts he gave at the London club Omi Ammer in uh, October of 2023. And the concert video could be part of a deluxe version of Inner Standing. Danny said he also plans on touring behind the album, but no dates have been announced yet. Special thanks to Joanne Michaels for that information. <laughs> and finally... Very sorry to report on the passing of musician, record producer, and songwriter Mark Spiro, who wrote songs with Julian Lennon, including Saltwater and the recent Every Little Moment. He also wrote songs with John Waite, also for the band's Heart and Cheap Trick. He died from cancer on his birthday, and Julian wrote, I am devastated that I will never see him again, laugh with him again, be creative with him again, but I am so thankful to have known him and his incredible loving family. Salt water wells in my eyes, and the tears roll in between. If you go through uh, Julian's catalog, you'll find his name there among several songwriters that Julian worked with periodically. Okay. Interesting day to die on your birthday. Your birthday, yeah. Mm, strange. Yeah. Although death does does not take any days off, so. Nope. This is so. Yeah. All right, so on to our main topic. As I said, uh, Rolling Stone just put out a list of the top 100 solo Beatles songs as put together by Rob Sheffield. We're going to go through the first half of those from 100 to 51. We're going to do them in groups of 10 and get everyone's opinion on those 10 songs each at a time. Okay, this is the the uh, visual part of our show. <laughs> so usually we don't have this too often, but uh, but sometimes. So let's uh, hopefully this will work and everybody will be able to see it. Our our audience. So here here it is. This is the the actual site. So uh, we'll be able to uh, kind of follow along. You'll be able to follow along as uh, we go through. Now, I we're not going to be discussing in depth every single song, but you'll be able to at least you know follow along as we're talking about uh, some of the songs. So, and hopefully, you guys watching, if you want to, you can probably look for this online and read it yourself, or get the latest issue, the physical issue. Mm -hmm. Stone. All right. So the number one hundred song. Scroll down there. Is how is how. Sorry, from John's Imagine album. Number 99 is With a Little Luck, Paul's number one single in the U.S. from 1978 from London Town. Number 98, I'd Have You Anytime, George Harrison, Bob Dylan, composition from All Things Must Pass. And number 97, the No-No song from Goodnight Vienna, big hit for Ringo here, written by Hoyt Axton. Number six is Cut Me Some Slack, Paul McCartney with uh, three members of Nirvana, first appearing on uh, the Sound uh, City soundtrack. Uh, also, number 95, Just Like Starting Over from John Lennon, massive hit, the first single from Double Fantasy. Number 94 is The Day the World Gets Round from Living in the Material World, someone's favorite album. <laughs> uh, number 93 is Old Dirt Road, John Lennon's song that he wrote with Harry Nilsson on Walls and Bridges. Number 92, another number one hit here uh, in the States for Paul and Wings. Listen to what the man said from Venus and Mars. And at number 91, Awaiting on You All, George Harrison's song from All Things Must Pass. All right. So why don't I get the opinions? of uh each of my co-hosts here starting with uh with kit what is your impression of these 10 songs to kick things off here okay well there were a couple of um surprises um i'd have you anytime i was thrilled to see that there i love that song i've talked about that many times on this show so i was i was absolutely thrilled to see that um i and i was um 
kind of shocked to see cut me some slack um that was one of the songs that was kind of my huh song on this list because i've just never really i've, I've always thought of this song more as I don't know if a novelty is is the way to put it, but I just thought, you know, kind of a fun one-off, you know, it was, you know, Servana, you know, we all called it the Servana. There's always fun that Paul reunited with the um, surviving members of Nirvana, but I just never thought of it as that great a song. I mean, it was fun, but not particularly memorable. So I don't know if I would have included it in the 100 top solo songs okay. um so that that was a song that i i just thought was kind of odd to to put in the top 100 um so those those were the two songs that that really um stood out for me um in in this uh this list so i just uh, a pleasant surprise and a what <laughs> the list otherwise um you know i i thought they were they were decent uh, decent choices but those were the two that stuck out for me a question for you and, and for tom and joe part of me is so conditioned to thinking that if a song was a major hit it should be ranked fairly high mm -hmm. you've got with a little luck here at 99 you've got listen to what the man said at 92 mm -hmm. now there's always the possibility that well in this case the person <clears throat> who wrote this rob sheffield doesn't like those songs like other hits you know, in, in the solo Beatle canon. And certain songs, um, you may feel you're tired of hearing after all these years. Um, I, I wouldn't say that about most songs um, or hits. But do you feel that these songs were ranked too low? Well, I mean, that is a good question because those were major hits. I, I kind of got the feeling, and we'll probably talk about this, you know, next week. Mm -hmm. um that this was a, a list where i i think rob was trying to reevaluate and maybe push certain songs that didn't get should have gotten in his view remember right. this is subjective um right. that should have gotten more attention up toward the front and particularly the songs that were not hits maybe right. there is some fatigue factor in this um not to me but mm -hmm. um but maybe on on his end uh, so maybe, because uh, there were some other songs, well, we'll be getting to that later, that were big hits that I thought, well, where are they? They're not even here, right. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, because I, I think that that was kind of interesting that there were a couple of songs here that were major hits and they're ranked all the way at the bottom. Right. Uh, but I, I kind of wondered that if that was his intention here, that, uh, yeah, we, we have to put some hits in here but I'm going to pay more attention to the should have been hits, the deep album tracks, that kind of right. thing. Maybe a, shall we say, revisionist list, you know? Well, mm -hmm. it's looking at things from the perspective of your eyes and ears today. Exactly. exactly. So, and I do think, like you said, get a lot of people who follow this show are going to be pleasantly surprised at the album cuts that are on here that weren't hits. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It's probably the most fascinating aspect of this list for me, anyway. Mm -hmm. Tom, how about you? What did you think of the first ten songs? Well, here? well, well to, just to piggyback on what the, the, the whole question. Of, well, one let me just say that I I think it's obvious that Rob loves this catalog, these catalogs of music. Um, to to have these number one hits, as we say, so high in the list. Uh, I I think. He, he loves the music and because then there's more deep cuts that I think we also love that are, that are, you know, lower in the list or higher, mm -hmm. however you want to say it. So I think it's clear that he loves these songs. Right. Uh, and I think the, the, the more important thing is not really where they are on the list, but that they made the list, mm -hmm. I think. And, and, and the fact that whether or not we agree with it, I would have been happy if, if they weren't in any if, it, if there was no numbers next to them you know what i mean just mm -hmm. the fact that we just have them on his list and right. i think that's how maybe we should do it in the future is just make a list here's, here's 100 songs not in any particular order and then you guys can put them in the order that you want i mean i think i'm just yeah. starting to kind of like think a little differently on on this whole you know ranking thing but uh but the you know this top 10 i mean i guess i guess for me the top the the first 10 you know, Old Dirt Road was kind of a surprise. I don't know if that would be in my top 100. You know, cut me some slack. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he's got 
you know, more recent songs on this list as well. Mm -hmm. I just don't know. And it's a great rocker, but I don't know if I'd have it on my list. And the same with um, uh, The Day the World Gets Round. I mean, I know it's your favorite uh, album, Ken, but uh, uh, I don't know if that would be on my top 100. So, But the, the other songs on, you know, How, The Little Luck, I'd Have You Any Time, or Waiting On You All, uh, you know, Starting Over, you know, No No Song. I think they're all great, and I'm just glad that they made this list. Okay. Very good points there, Tom. Uh, Joe. How did you feel? Well, first of all, you know, I think what I take this with a grain of salt, any of these lists, because it's a subjective opinion. Right. Yeah. I know Rob, Rob Sheffield have, has maybe has some more knowledge. I don't care. My my list could be very different. Yeah. So all I'm doing is speaking on behalf of myself, what I think it might be too low or too high or whatever. And anybody could do that. So for this list, um, the, the first the 10 that we're going through, like, you know, I look at it and I say, for me, again, you know, this is me, with a little luck, wow, that, that's low, you know, and the uh, same thing with listen to what the man said, you know. Um, but again, if there's only one right way to rank, we'd mm -hmm. all have the same lists. Yeah. That's where, where it comes in when you're subjective. I mean, I thought how, I mean, I, how is a, is a really good Lennon song. It's, it's wonderful. And I think, wow, I'm glad it's on there, but 100, you know, mm. this is what I wind up going through you know i say well you know i would have had it ranked differently um some other observations um as much as i love john i'm not a fan of old dirt road i wouldn't have had it i, I wouldn't have been on my list hmm. on your list same thing with day the day the world gets round i mean i, I you know what like tom was saying i mean i do like that album living in the material world but i don't think I, that would make my hundred but then again i'm not rob sheffield <laughs> <laughs> so um a couple of observations. Um, yeah, cut me some slack. I, I really like that, but I don't. I don't know if I think it's top one hundred material. But I like that it was on there. You know, it's it's stuff like that that was interesting about the list. Seemed like uh, things you wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, Ringo's No No song, which I was so happy to see it on there. And I think he said something like, "Get used to it, folks. There's going to be Ringo on this." Mm -hmm. I read that that passage. So right. we're used to it. The only thing I say is I'm surprised that's so low when we later consider, which I won't mention any now, other Ringo songs that got ahead of No No Song, which yeah. I think are inferior to No No Song. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that was, you know, good to see it on there. But uh, I see Ringo get some, some time. But, you know, it's funny where it's ranked compared to some other Ringo songs we'll get to later. Great. Hmm. All right. Great. Well, in contrast to what you were just saying, Joe, I, I really am interested in everybody's lists. As long as you're knowledgeable about the music and you really know it, then it matters to me whether I agree with you or not. So, uh, you know, no matter what, we'd all come up with different lists <laughs> of our favorite 100. And they're all valid as long as you know, really know the catalog. Yeah. It's when people comment about a catalog that they know little about. That's when it disturbs me. Right. You know? um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm really happy that How is on the list, but I think of that now as being one of the true gems in John's solo catalog, and I certainly would have ranked it higher. Yes. Um, yeah, but I'm glad that any song that's a deep cut here is on the list. And I know some people say, it's the Imagine album. You should know the whole Imagine album. The average person out there doesn't know many songs on the Imagine album, believe it or not. But How is one that's I, I think has always been overlooked, but I would certainly have placed it a lot higher. And I do think um, certainly uh, the number one hits from Paul here with Little Luck and Listen to What the Man Said, I would have ranked higher. Glad to see I'd Have You Any Time. Glad to see No No Song. Cut me some slack. I'm going to agree with all of you. I mean, I like it. I love the fact that they collaborated you know, yeah. Paul with Dave Grohl, who's Dave Grohl is a big fan of, of Paul and the Beatles. Um, I love the edginess of it. I think we're we're kind of living in a time, as represented at least in this list, when Paul jams and does something off the cuff and people like it. You. you know, which is what Electric Arguments was, you know, creating a song from thin air in a day. 
each of those songs were that something really spontaneous and there are people that really like that but it's nice for paul to just cut loose have that really strong voice rock voice on there and it's very edgy so i'm kind of glad it was on there but i i personally would probably never have put it on there um just like starting over i'm really shocked is this low um the day the world gets around i'm thrilled to pieces that it's on there you know i would put most of the songs from living in the material world on this list uh some obviously i'd rank higher than others old dirt road i love a lot but you know i there's so many other John Lennon songs I would rank higher that are not on the list at all. But Waiting on You All, I would definitely put in there because, you know, apart from All Things Must Pass being as near perfect a collection as there can possibly be, Waiting on You All got a lot of attention when it first came out. Mm -hmm. and, right. You know, mm -hmm. he even performed it at the concert for Bangladesh. So, um, yeah. So, again, we all have different opinions. We're sharing them with you. Mm -hmm. Ten songs mm -hmm. at a time here. And uh, let's move on then to number 90, mm -hmm. Stardust, Ringo from Sentimental Journey. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to hear what Kit has to say about that one. <laughs> number 89 is Out the Blue. I have a feeling Rob might be a fan of this show. <laughs> <laughs> we all have praised Out the Blue here. Yes. Mind Games album. Uh, Bluebird from Band on the Run from Paul and Wings. 87. Another Living in the Material World song. Try Some, Buy Some. Number 86. Arrow Through Me from Paul and Wings from Back to the Egg. Number 85. Sunshine Life for Me, Sail Away Raymond from the Ringo album. George Harrison wrote that one. Uh, number 84 is Crippled Inside uh, from Imagine. It's a lot of songs from Imagine on this list. Number 83, Owen Lynn will be very happy to see this. Yes, I know he loves this song, Love in Song from uh, Venus and Mars from Paul and Wings. Number 82, Lipstick Traces on a Cigarette. Ringo from the Bad Boy album. Kind of strange they have a picture from Stop and Smell the Roses there because, you know, yeah. Not, yeah. not matching up the, the, the correct album with the song. Mm -hmm. And uh, number 81 is Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey. Another number one there from Paul. Don't do that. <laughs> Paul's speaking. You're not agreeing with me, are you? <laughs> okay. Um, so... How do we each feel about these 10 songs? We'll start this time with Joe. All right. Well, first of all, Uncle Albert, Admiral Halsey would be my number one, two, or three. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it would be in my top three. You know, I mean, I'm probably, I can't imagine, I can't conceive that being so low. But then again, this is my opinion. Hmm. Um, out the blue, I'm glad to see that get recognition. I know we all love it here. I know Tom's big on that song. I think I've heard him talk about it a lot from the Mind Games album. Great to see that get mentioned. I'm okay, I'm okay with it beyond it all. Even 89 is all right with me. Um, Stardust, I don't. I, that's bizarre to me. I mean, uh, seeing Stardust by Ringo up, up there. But uh, other than the fact that it's, it's interesting because it's something different. Everything's represented. You even have Sentimental Journey, the album represented there well not every album represented but in this list but to see that get some love is is interesting even if i might not agree with it now sticking with ringo lipstick traces i i do like that song and i do like the bad boy album mm -hmm. you know I'm, I, I really think that's an underrated album that too often gets lumped in with the people don't care so much for ringo the fourth and so forth so on they clump bad boy in with it but having said that Lipstick Traces, though, ahead of, like, No-No songs, another No-No song and stuff like that, that's that's a toughie for me to... I like it, but it's kind of rough to, to, to figure out why. Um, love to see uh, Crippled Inside getting mentioned. I know that's a, a kit favorite. It's a favorite of mine, too. Uh, and uh, well, a lot of Ringo stuff I'm talking about here. Sunshine Life, for me, that was a pleasant surprise. Sail Away Raymond, seeing that on the list. That is from the Ringo self-titled album and the George Harrison pen, right? Yes. Uh, song. And uh, really, really a delight to see that. Well, sorry again, Ken, but it's, they picked like a the couple of songs I'm not that wild about off 
Material World. Try some, buy some. Ooh, that's to me the least song on that album. Ooh, I just never liked it. But uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that on there. But those are some thoughts that I have from that batch. All right, very good, uh, Tom. This might be my least favorite block of the list here. <laughs> Just, um, and, and it's not because I don't hate the songs or anything. It's just that they're not really high on my list. I mean, Stardust, um, you know, Lipstick Traces, uh, Sunshine Light. I mean, the three Ringo songs that represent this this batch. I mean, I could I could probably pick another 10 that I would rather have. Uh, and we might do that on the second half of this show. Um but and then again, you know, try some, buy some, Bluebird. I mean, I just don't know necessary for me. Those 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 songs are and, and loving song too. I mean, I love it, but it's this. Like I said, this might be my least favorite block of ten. But uh, good good to great songs, but they just wouldn't necessarily make my one hundred uh, list. But you know, Arrow Through Me, I'll take any day of the week. Out the blue, yeah. I mean, that would probably be a top ten for me. Um, and uh, and you know you you gotta you know Uncle Albert you gotta respect Uncle Albert Admiral Halsey being Paul's first number one, um, but I don't think it's his best number one. Uh, but uh, yeah, again, it's very interesting. Like I said, I think I I really knew he loved these these songs when I saw this block because you really have to love these songs to uh -huh. put <laughs> you know to put them on on this list and uh, and some great deep deep cuts, man. I I'm really really was impressed by with all the deep cuts that he put on this list mm -hmm. okay um just curious not remembering what you had to say about the bad boy album when we did a show on it but what problem would you have with lipstick traces uh, i just i mean it's it's a good song for that album but if you're doing a best of ringo and you're if you're doing a top 100 best solo songs I, I do think there's some more modern day song Ringo songs that I think deserve to be on this list. Mm -hmm. um, I do think he concentrated on a, a lot of the earlier uh, Ringo stuff. Um, yeah. And like I said, I would put, you know, like, you know, uh, so many modern, more modern day songs, uh, you know, over over lipstick traces. And it's not that I have a problem with it. I just think there's better Ringo songs that would be on my list. Yeah. Well, that's you know? a great comment to make. It isn't so much whether we like it or not. It's, just that there right. are that he would rank higher or right more mm -hmm. than the ones that he's picking. Yeah, Can't talk about you. Yep, and and I I agree, Tom. I think there were other songs that you know from the Mark Hudson years and and beyond that you know could have been mm. could have been picked. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah, Stardust. No, <laughs> just no. That's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, you, you guys know. <laughs> It's, you know how I feel about his version of Stardust. Um, Wasn't that on your top three songs? Wasn't that on your? Didn't that make your top three? Uh oh yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but it was number four. No, no. <laughs> number four, right? <laughs> bubbling under. Yeah, that's bubbling under. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, that was my other um, huh song. Uh, that's just you know you know me. I just have never liked his version of Stardust. You know, what about Sentimental Journey? You know, that would have been okay if he wanted yeah. to take a song from, from that album. That would have been great. I would have been cool with that. Um, let's see. So, uh, oh, there's Bluebird. Now, I, sorry, Tom. I'm like justice for Bluebird. <laughs> I was thrilled to see it on here. Always love Bluebird. I, I I was thrilled to see it. Arrow Through Me. Oh, my gosh. Love to see that on here. I've, I've always yeah. adored that song. That was a pleasant surprise. Um, Sunshine Life for me, I, I was really excited to see that on here. I think that doesn't get it, the attention it deserves. Um, I've, I've always just loved that, you know, members of the band. And I mean, I just, you know, I've always thought it, it deserves more attention than it gets. Cripple Inside, you guys know how much I love that song. So I was, uh, definitely thrilled to see it. Um, yeah, really the only other quibble I had was, yeah, Uncle Albert at number 81. I mean too low i mm. mean i that that deserves you know maybe top 10 i i mean i i was shocked when i saw it this low i mean that is not only was that a major hit i mean it's so inventive um still yeah. played today um why so low rob come on <laughs> <laughs> i mean what are you thinking it's it's really uh um you know it's a classic 
so inventive, still sounds distinctive today. So I can't imagine why he would rank it at 81. I, I, that was definitely topping my list of too low. <laughs> so, okay. so, yeah, for sure, um, that was one of my quibbles. But otherwise, I, you know, th there were many things. And yeah, Lipstick Traces was a kind of an odd choice, I, I thought. But, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't hate it. But as you said, other, other Ringo songs, I, I think I would have chosen over that one. For sure. Okay. Some great comments overall. Mm -hmm. um, I happen to just love Stardust, unlike mm -hmm. the rest I know. of <laughs> And I love the whole arrangement behind it. Um, there are some songs that we talked about when we covered Sentimental Journey where you might think that Ringo's voice wasn't strong enough for certain songs. It matched perfectly with Stardust as far as I'm concerned. I love the, the whole arrangement, the solo in the middle and Ringo screaming out, ah, hit me <laughs> in the middle. And, uh, you know, Paul McCartney is supposed to have done the arrangement for that song. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it really works. But I could also understand if you're going to pick something from Sentimental Journey, certainly the title track mm -hmm. works really well. Um, yeah. Maybe Bye Bye Blackbird, you know. Yes. I like his version. Was a great That's good, too. I agree. That's good, too. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm glad to see the love for Out the Blue, although kind of like how I wish it was way up higher on the list. Um, you know, one of the great overlooked John Lennon solo songs. Uh, Bluebird, you know, Ben on the Run is a flawless album, so I have no problem with Bluebird. Um, but like like Tom was saying, there are certain songs that I would that I would pick over some of the ones that are chosen here. But Bluebird is a great song. You know? There might be a few songs from Ben on the Run that I wouldn't put on the list. Try Some, Buy Some, I think is precious. You know, I love, you know, every song on Living in the Material World pretty much. Um, Arrow Through Me is a real gem, an overlooked gem. Yeah. It's getting a little bit more recognition these yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Uh, Sunshine Life for Me is a pleasant surprise. And I, I really love that song more now, the whole down feel of it yeah. and you got members of the band all throughout that song playing on it and of course you can hear george in the background with the, yeah. the, yeah. the backing vocals having written the song uh for ringo crippled inside is a real gem in the in the country rock vein love and song i'm glad that it's getting noticed here it's a great love song Does, you know but it's one that nobody ever talks about right and, um every now and then on our show here, what I notice online, a lot of people really loving the Venus and Mars album so much more these days. Some even saying it was better than Band on the Run as an album. But I like when attention's given to a song like Love and Song, which you'll never hear <laughs> unless it's on a Beatles show. But it's it's uh, you know, it's just that there's so many songs that Paul McCartney's done yeah. now with the huge catalog that he has. Yeah. I would certainly place a lot of other songs above it, but certainly worth mentioning here. When he did, when he did, uh, when he put out the um, the Pierre McCartney box set, uh, he had commented about rediscovering Arrow Through Me and talked about how much he he really you know admired or you know how highly he thought of the song. So that's why, in a way, I'm still kind of hopeful that we'll get it back to the egg box set. <laughs> you know, yeah, if, if not just for Arrow Through Me, but. Uh, but uh, I, I was glad sometimes when you when you, an artist goes back and rediscovers some of their songs and they realize that just because that period might not have been as successful as other periods, right. uh, you can you can also discover that yeah I mean yeah some of these songs were really good. And uh, as Lawrence Juber has told us, Erika yeah. um, Badu made oh, a Erika Badu song yeah, and and uh, I think sampled part of yeah. Paul. Yes, I know that song. That. So. Good. Yeah, it's getting more recognition these days. I'm I'm happy to see. Um, and what else? Local Albert Admiral Halsey is is a masterpiece as far as I'm concerned. Not just yep. as a song, but the whole production behind it, and how all those melodies interweave with each other and just flows like so naturally. Um, really should have been ranked higher, in my opinion. Absolutely. The one thing I want to comment on um, is that because all of us have put together a list that we'll we'll read to you guys when we're done with both shows here um, of what's missing. Mm -hmm. 
But if you included all the songs that we felt were missing, you'd have to take out songs here on this list that you felt are worthy of it. So right. it's easy to say all this. Yeah. You might say, but it's a hundred songs, but there's so many great songs. And it's very easy to miss out on certain ones that you really think deserve to be. You know, the solo catalog is is massive. You know, mm -hmm. just think of all the, the albums that Paul has released alone and Ringo's put out 20 albums plus the EPs. Mm -hmm. Got John and George, the Traveling Wilburys, oh. which might have made this list. I'm not sure. We'll have to. Yeah, there's a Wilbury song. <laughs> if there's a Wilbury song? I couldn't yeah. remember that. OK, couldn't yeah. remember. We're supposed to make everybody guess while we're saying not supposed to give away anything. Remember. <laughs> So now we'll go from 80, 71. And at number 80 is John's Watching the Wheels, of course, from Double Fantasy. Third single from the album. Number 10 hit here in the States. Number 79 is Every Night from the first McCartney album. Number 78. Here's a surprise for you. Cosmic Empire, one of the bonus tracks that accompanied the All Things Must Pass archival box set when it came out um number 77 another double fantasy song woman the second single from that album number 76 harry's song from liverpool eight very interesting choice right there 75 dear friend from wings from wildlife number 74 from the plastic Ono band album hold on Number 73, No Other Baby. Wow. From Rundell or Run. That was a surprise for me anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, 72, Any Road, George Harrison from Brainwashed. And 71, My Valentine from Kisses on the Bottom from Paul McCartney. All right. This time, we're going to start with Master Tom. Oh, thank you, Ken. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Some more surprises here, and and yeah, right. <laughs> uh, more surprises, more deep cuts. Uh, you know, I'm I'm loving, you know, his list, but not necessarily agreeing with 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 these picks. You know, I, you know, Joe. I know that my Valentine's important to you, and but uh, it's not important to me. <laughs> so, um, you know, not not one that I would uh, necessarily have on my list. I was really surprised with no other baby. I think he he does a fantastic Paul. That being Paul does a fantastic job with no other baby. Glad to see that on there. Now Harry's song. Now this is one of the songs that I was glad to see a more modern day Ringo song on on this list. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's more, uh, you know, that that could have been on this list that that wasn't unfortunately. Um, I think every night is a is a masterpiece. Watching the wheels, you know, woman, you know, again, there's all these all these these first three blocks they have featured one or more, many multiple number ones uh, here in this. So so you know you're getting number you're getting big time hits and you're getting deep cuts and none deeper than the Cosmic Empire from yeah. from uh, the all things must pass uh, box which which we're going to see more of you know this isn't just the only surprise when it comes to george on this list um so uh kind of happy to see that uh, obviously any road i think we all agree any road mm -hmm. is deserves to be on any uh top 100 solo beatles list and i think all of us could agree with that even in the chat and uh, i think the one i was really surprised of was um a dear friend because i don't think you know many people really know or appreciate or concentrate on this particular track you know being on an album that's you know one of you know paul's deeper albums if you want to call it that one that doesn't get much attention uh one that was reevaluated a little bit more favorably when it got the um deluxe treatment but um it's it's nice to see it's nice to see on the list mm -hmm. so I, all in all not a bad uh not a bad bad block here hold on i think is phenomenal track so yeah. um you know, again, it's just uh, whether or not we would have a have these the have these picks on our list or not. But uh, a good block. Every time you read ten songs, there's always a few surprises. Right. Some that you expect yeah. to be on there. It's a mixture yeah. of all of that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Kit. Yeah, I'd say. Um, I mean, the only real quibble I had was I love watching the wheels. That's one of my all time favorite uh, John mm. Lennon songs. Yeah, that's too low. 80? I, I mean, that's 
<laughs> at the very least top 50. I mean, I'd even say top 20. I don't know. I, I just, I love, love that song. And that's, that's too low ranking in my opinion. Uh, Every night that was as, as Tom, you just said, great. That's a wonderful song. Glad to see it here. Um, yeah. Cosmic empire was a, a, a big shock. Uh, I thought, yeah. I mean, but talk about your deep tracks mm. um, and, uh, and, and Harry's song. In fact, I think this is one of a couple of tracks from Liverpool eight. Um, I, I believe, which is, um, I th or was it? I thought there was another Liverpool eight track there. I can't. I'm trying, maybe not. Uh, but I mean, just amazing to see any Liverpool eight track because I mean that's not can you know widely uh, considered one of you know Ringo's top albums. So it was a you know really a, a surprise uh, to uh, to see that here. So you know, nice to to have it uh, get some attention. You know, very. Uh, very nice surprise. Don't know if I would would have picked that one, but um, I've always liked the other side of Liverpool myself. But oh yeah, I think worry uh, or no worry in the hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, on. That, that's oh, on the we'll, yeah. We'll talk about yeah. that later. Yeah, Let's but we'll on. talk about that later. <laughs> of course, for um, sure. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, hold on, of course. Great. I I was oh uh, yes, no other baby was a a nice surprise. Um, you know, and I think Rob did a, a nice job of describing its significance because not only it being great song but you know the meaning of of it in, at paul's in paul's life at that particular time and how it yeah you know really went to his vocal performance and and that sort of thing and so it is a a song that's kind of grown on me over time and so i thought that was a, a nice addition um to the list so uh so that was a nice surprise so uh and of course at any road uh my valentine i'm kind of uh, with you, Tom, I, it's not a song that I'm crazy about, but, you know, a lot of people, you know, really like it. So <laughs> I guess it's going to be on the list, but, um, yeah. you know, what can, what can we do? Yeah. The, the, the thing about Cosmic Empire that I question about is because I'm not a bootleg guy. I don't know if this if, if this had the song has been bootlegged or how yeah. he would have heard it before or if the all things must set moment all things must pass box set would have been the first time he heard it i mean if that was the case then that's that's a that's a relatively short amount of time to make it onto your top 100 uh mm -hmm. list that's my guess he must have heard it yeah. well may i don't know maybe not i assume it was through the box set but maybe i don't know maybe not it was it's been bootlegged for many years okay oh recordings that george did on acoustic guitar that he gave to phil Spector so he would know the material you know okay. go through it and and pick what what phil thought would be the best songs for him to do and phil made a whole bunch of notes to give to george of what he thought about certain songs mm -hmm. so, okay. um, yeah so joe i'm pretty okay overall with this block i think except for as kit said just a personal thing. Watching the wheels, I think, is one of John's greatest songs solo. I think it should have been higher, you know. Other than that, I mean, it's great to see every night in there. It's a, a great Paul song. That's not always, you know, right away a song you think of necessarily, but it's a highlight of McCartney. It's great to see that on here. Uh, Woman from John, another song that I've really come to love these days. Mm -hmm. When it was out, and I, I, I don't know, it didn't knock me out as much as it should have when it first came out. But I'm loving that song more and more, and I hear it on the radio a lot, that song. A uh, woman is good to see that represented. Dear Friend was a surprise, you know, from Wildlife. That's the kind of thing, like, uh, you like to see. You like to see something a little, a little different, things you might not expect. Because of the history of John and Paul, it's a, it's a very poignant song, and the difficulties they were having at the time. Great to see that represented. I've always loved Hold On from Plastic mm -hmm. Ono Band. Um, might be my sometimes I think it's my favorite song on there, but I, yeah. it's hard to tell sometimes. But uh, yeah, good to see that. No other babies is is good. I like that. Run Devil Run. Um, any road when we did the George Harrison show not too long ago, I I, I singled that song out. I mean, that is becoming one of my very 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 favorite George songs of all. Mm. Any road, and it's my favorite off the Brainwashed album. Oh. Um, so I'm I'm loving that that's on there. Now, where I stand with my Valentine is I don't think it's one of Paul's greatest songs, but uh, I do like it. And you know that's you know our song, you know with me yeah. and my girlfriend. But 
as much as I think it's 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 a d- d- decent song for Paul, especially at that point of of his life, and you know, given that so many of the songs or covers, a kisses on the bottom was good to have. But having said that, um, seventy one, I, I might be too high for me with that. If uh, I don't even know if I'd put it on my hundred, to be honest with you, but if I did, it might be one hundred. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that was one that that I feel differently about that I thought was kind of too high you know so good block oh harry's song i wanted to mention that you know liverpool eight um i haven't played it in a while but i know there are songs i like off there and harry's song is not ringing a bell so i'm mm-hmm. kind of like lost on it uh i don't know there's other songs i do like from it i, I would like to see the title track on this list from it would be on my list mm. which it's not it's not on the list i don't think mm. <laughs> Liverpool okay. eight. All right. Um, you might be surprised that my comments are going to be similar to to everybody else's. Um, watching the wheels to me is one of John's greatest songs of all time. Yep. For everything mm-hmm. that he expressed in three and a half minutes about where he was at at yep. that stage in his life, lyrically, musically, everything about it, it's an absolute gem. And I definitely would have placed it a lot higher than number eighty. Every night is also, you know, it's become kind of a standard in a way. And I think Paul has helped himself out a bit by bringing it out every now and then in concert. Um, and of course, the unplugged version was really nice, although it was slowed down a bit, a more soulful version. But um, and Cosmic Empire is a real surprise. Um, you know, I've been familiar with it ever since the bootleg came out. And I'm really happy that that bootleg, all that material the acoustic stuff, as well as the other demos with the band um, there was included in the archival box set. But I'm still surprised with so many other great George Harrison songs that that made the list and others didn't. Woman is my favorite solo John Lennon song. So for it to rank at number 77, no way. (laughs) That would be easily in my top 10. Um, Harry's song was a nice surprise. It's really kind of a tribute to Harry Nilsson and it's written in, in a Harry Nilsson style. Right. And so um, I probably would have put the song Liverpool eight in there, like Joe was saying, instead of that one, but nice to get some acknowledgement for that one. Dear friend. I like a lot. I'm going to go back to that in a, in a few moments. Hold on is, is great. No other baby. Um, no other baby is a song that I, I've always liked. I wasn't, completely crazy about what i like about the recording was that uh you know there's this tremendous buildup in the song paul is singing it in a lower key and then the old trick towards the end mm-hmm. sings it up higher yep. so it's a lot stronger and i love dave gilmore's guitar work on it um but there's so many other songs i would have picked in paul's solo catalog than no other baby i probably wouldn't have put it in the in the top 100 at all any road any road is such a perfect song, <laughs> yeah. you know, and a great album opener. And how many times have we said on this show, if a certain song had been released as a single in the seventies, it would have been a hit. Any road is so damn catchy. And it, I don't, it's just a shame that brainwash didn't sell as well as it should have. I think it got good reviews, but really any road should have been a hit. My Valentine. I kind of feel like, the rest of you do it's a nice song it's a pleasant song i've always liked it i have always preferred only our hearts from kisses on the bottom it's a Mm -hmm. much better composition than my valentine and never got the acknowledgement from paul he should have brought that one out too but um you know i'm i'm okay with it being on this list my valentine but i probably wouldn't have put it in the in the top 100 there's one question I want to ask you guys, and that is there's a lot of songs here that not only have two Beatles working together. And actually, there's one song that has three of them working together. Yep. Sure uh, is. But if if there was no backstory to some of these songs of what was going on back then, does that add a lot of weight to these songs that you maybe wouldn't have placed as high as you did? You know, it's yeah, a good you question. Yeah, I'm not going to say whether or not "How Do You Sleep" is on the list. We're not going to tell anyone yet. But if it was, would you say it's only because you know John is attacking Paul here, 
And in this case, dear friend, is Paul writing about John? If this, if dear friend was about anybody else, would you be including this on this list? That's interesting. Uh, maybe not for maybe not for dear friend. For me, maybe I don't know. Um, that's a good good point. Yeah. Well, how do you how do you sleep though? Uh, for what that's worth, I mean, a lot of people say. I think even John said it's a good track, you know, mm -hmm. regardless yeah. of who it's about, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree there. I think that track stands on its own no matter what it's about. But but yeah, dear friend, that's an interesting question because that does add a lot of weight to it. Yes. When you know what it's about. Right. You know, it it, it definitely improves upon the song in a in a in a weird yeah. way. <laughs> yeah. One's more motion to it. Same thing with I, too many people, which I'm not yes. sure whether it's on this list either. <laughs> but if mm -hmm. I that would be on my list even if it wasn't about John. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if dear friend would. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, no, I I agree with about dear friend. Yeah, I I read a quote um in the lyrics book on uh, maybe I'm amazed the latest show that we just did with Alan Cozen on two legs and he talks about how yeah some songs might be personal but then he also will write it in such a way that it anybody it could sing it and have some kind of meaning towards that person. Mm -hmm. um you know what i mean um so yeah i mean i think it's it's kind of cool we know that it's got a lena connection to it and maybe we you know rank it a little higher than what we normally would if we didn't know uh you might have a point there ken but uh um I, I, that's the thing i mean you if the song is relatable to you i don't know if it really necessarily we have to know um what this what the composer was thinking of when he wrote it um as long as it means something to you uh i think you know we can do with it as we or we can appreciate it, it appreciate it any way we want to so i mean yeah i mean i, I kind of kind of maybe like kind of avoiding the question in a way but uh um it's an interesting question i have to think about that some more yeah well you know i i agree with what you just said there if it's something that that can be about anybody else or can have more of a universal message yeah right it, but i can't imagine anybody going into the wildlife album hearing that not knowing the history behind dear friend and i'm sure right. some effect on what you think on what you think of that song mm -hmm. so i think we all kind of gravitate towards those songs when, when we find out that there's, you know, it, it, it kind of weaves its way into the other three, no matter whoever is singing it, we kind of maybe, you know, put a little higher on the pedestal than maybe what we would if it didn't have a connection. You know what I mean? That's Does that make I'm sense? Saying. Yeah. It's possible that dear friend yeah. wouldn't be on the list if we didn't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, all right. So let's do number 70 to 61. Okay, number 70 is from John, Nobody Told Me, from Milk and Honey, the first single and a big hit from that album. Number 69 from McCartney 3, Seize the Day. Curious to find out what you guys think about that as a choice. 68, Back Off Boogaloo, from Ringo, top 10 hit in the States. It's actually his biggest hit in the UK. Um, 67 is Queenie Eye, from the new album from Paul, getting more recent stuff in there. Number 66, Bless You from Walls and Bridges. Interesting choice right there. 65, So Bad from Pipes of Peace. 64, Beware of Darkness from George Harrison from All Things Must Pass. 63, Paul McCartney's Junk from the first McCartney album. 62 is Isolation from Plastic Unold Band. And at 61, Temporary Secretary, what Paul added to his set list around, uh, I think, 2015 from McCartney 2. All right. From 70 to 61, let's talk about those songs right now. And let's start with Joe this time. Oh, boy. I don't know where to start with this. One. <laughs> this is an une une uneven bunch. All right. Back off Boogaloo. No question. Great Ringo, in my opinion, uh, deserves to be on the top 100. It's in a good spot, 68. You know, I'm happy with that. Uh, Seize the Day. Wow. What a surprise that is. I, I really enjoy the song Seize the Day. Hmm. You know, I love the way Paul sings it. And it's one of the newest songs on here. 
really. Uh, and yeah, it just was great to see it. I mean, would I would I put it of a sixty nine out of you know or in the, on the list at all? Maybe not. But I love this kind of courageous decision in this case uh-huh. to see something different like that. Uh, you know, nobody told me. Yeah, okay, it, it's kind of fun romp for John, you know, um, in the fun sense, yeah, I've always enjoyed it, even though, of course, it didn't come out properly because John passed on and it was after he died. But I think that's it's a popular tune and a fun tune that I would like to be on the list. Maybe a little higher. I mean, when I say higher, I meant, I guess, lower now from the beginning. Clo- yeah, lower, more 190s and those. Uh, I wouldn't put it quite as as up there. Uh, I'm trying to think now. Queenie Eye. Hmm. I don't have enough time to reflect on this batch. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I. I love the, the the album new. Notice I always say I love the album new. I don't. I, I don't say I love the new album. Mm. But uh, um, Queenie Eye is a good track. It's a good track. I don't know if I put it on my hundred. It's great to see Bless You get some uh, love and respect. That's another song that uh, growing up I didn't love too much off uh, Walls and Bridges from John. And now I just think it's so perfect to show what his love and attachment to Yoko at that point during his so-called lost weekend, even to the point of who's ever holding her now, be warm and kind-hearted, you know, feelings go out, looking out for Yoko. Mm -hmm. And I still say that shows where his heart really was still during that period. Mm. So, yeah, but seeing it at number 66, again, I'm, a, you know, it's great to be to see that. I don't know if I would put it that high if I put it on the list at all. So Bad is a song I've always liked by Paul, but uh, I probably wouldn't put it on the top 100. I really do like the song. In some ways, I'm thinking if that's my favorite song off Pipes of Peace. It's one of them if not the best, but it's kind of funny to see it that high to me. Uh, Beware of Darkness, classic from George. I would even go higher with it. You know, it, all things must pass stuff. Hey, you know, I mean, it's, it's all it's all top 10 stuff. It's got that beautiful haunting feel to it that I love. Mm-hmm. Uh, junk is a nice song from Paul, maybe a little too high. You know, I've always liked Junk. Isolation, John Lennon, another classic. You know, it gets a lot of attention these days, isolation, uh, a lot of coverage. Um, yeah, I guess that's about, I'm thinking like the number is about right with me, or okay, where it is, 62. You gotta remember, we're talking about 100 songs here. Right. You know, not everything can be top 40 or top 50. I'm glad it's here, and I think it's in a good spot. The one I'm excited to get to is Temporary Secretary, which... Has no business, in my opinion, being on a top 100 list. <laughs> but having said that, I don't want to seem like a temporary secretary or McCartney 3, or McCartney 2 hater, because I'm not. I, su- I support that album. I defend the album. I like temporary secretary. I do. Although I think it didn't come out successfully on tour when he did it. I'm glad that he attempted it, but I didn't think it fit, it fit too well and worked. But anyway, on this list, though, of 100 best solo Beatles songs, I, I wouldn't put it on there. I love it. I love the whole album. It's one of my uh, pleasures. I won't put the G word in front of that. Pleasures. Thank you. <laughs> but we should, uh, we should off, never put the G word. Right, I'm not guilty about it. Oh, that, did I say the word? Oh. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just. But you know, trying to be my fair feeling about it. I don't know. It's it, it's it's really brave putting it in, in the top hundred and that high too. That's pretty high. It's mm-hmm. Not like it's 98 or something. But uh, I know it was. It's a popular track in some ways too. I think people wasn't it like a, a, a was it was it was it a single? It was a twelve inch single. Was it like a, it was a, a little single? Bit of a it was a single in the UK, a ten inch single in the UK. Yeah. yeah, but it was. I think did it become a little bit of a of a BBC modest dance later sense? on, and it became popular in clubs. I think clubs right. Like that. Yeah, that makes sense. It didn't. It didn't chart though. It got like a little bit more attention, you know. But uh, yeah, it's bizarre seeing that on the list though. But mm-hmm. I, there you go. Maybe I put. Put something else on there from McCartney too. All right, kid. Okay. This uh, 
the latest batch of 10. Yes. Um, well, nobody told me. I'm thrilled to see that here. I've always liked that song. I, you know, just classic examples of John's wordplay. Very quotable lines in it. Mm. Uh, I know it's unfinished, you know, but it's still uh, such a such a great, great song. I've always, always loved it. Love to see it here. Uh, Seize the Day, I don't know if I would have put it in the top 100, but uh, but it's nice to see a recent song here. Back off Boogaloo, you know, classic. Queenie Eye, I've, I've, I guess maybe some of it's a little fatigue factor because he's played it so many times live now. Mm. Um, and I just don't really view it as one of his, you know, best. I, I've just never been that crazy about the song. So I don't, again, don't know if I would put it in the top 100. Uh, bless you. I, you know, you know me, I've been a big defender of that song. So I was thrilled to see it here. Same with so bad. Um, I, that was a pleasant surprise. Uh, I, I love the harmonies on that. Uh, I agree with you, Joe, beware of darkness. I would have ranked higher, uh, definitely top 50. Um, I just, I love the lyrics, uh, love the arrangement. Um, yeah, junk. I I guess you know it's not one of my all time favorite um, Paul songs, but it's got a you know beautiful melody and and um, you know I think it belongs here. Isolation was a great surprise. That's one of my other all time favorite John songs. That's one of my favorite songs off the Plastic Ono Band uh, album. Mm. Of, you know, incredible lyrics. Yeah. Um, you know, and and just one of John's best vocals. Uh, I think so. I was thrilled to see that here. It deserves a lot more attention than it gets. Um, temporary secretary, I mean, it's, you know, it's fun. I, I think, um, you know, I can see why he put it there. It's gotten a lot of attention in the past, more attention in the past, I don't know, maybe close to 20 years or so. And, you know, since he started playing it in concert and it's, and it has that kind of techno um, appeal to it. I love the, the um, Twin Freaks remix that's a great mm -hmm. remix by the way i almost like that better than the original um but uh so i can see why i put it in there because it's gotten a lot more um you know play than it has you know in many many years yeah i don't know top 100 not 100 percent sure if i would have put it there but uh but it's it is kind of a it, it's gotten to be an important recording in his catalog in in recent years so i can see why i put it there maybe i wouldn't have ranked it that high but um, but I'm not 100% surprised to see it here. Plus, the McCartney 2 album has been reappraised in recent years. And, mm -hmm. you know, McCartney, right. McCartney 2, McCartney 3, a lot of people like that trilogy. Exactly. So old stuff, you know. Yep. So and this has become kind of a hip track to like, you uh -huh. know, and so I can kind of see why I put it there. Hmm. OK, mm. Tom. I gotta tell you, uh -oh. I really love I really love this block. I oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I was ready for you to start oh, slamming it. Oh, yeah. I got it. Yeah. And, right. and I don't expect you to understand. No, but just kidding. But uh, listen, <laughs> um, no, this I really love this block. I mean, there might be only one track in here where I don't know if I would. I don't think I would consider uh, in my top 100 and that would be a seize the day. Uh, I think it's a fine song, but the, you know, again, we have so many others that we might consider better than this, but this, the, this track, but that's fine. That's fine. Again, I'm glad to see a song like this on a, on a, on a list. Right. Um, you know, nobody told me love it. Uh, I, I think like watching the wheels and no man, nobody told me are kind of like so familiar to me. Anyways, I kind of yeah. like those two back to those two songs back to back. Um, you know, back off Boogaloo, Queenie, I, you know, I still find it fun, uh, track to listen to. I, I'm not, you know, fatigued on this song yet, even though I've seen him play it live, you know, a few times and, um, and yeah, it might be one of his more recent songs that, you know, I can see people getting fatigued on, but I still find it a very fun track. Um, you know, so bad I got, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of like where I first discovered Paul. So it's always going to be very important to me. Um, you know, video aside uh you know the song itself is it's what's important to me um you know unfortunately you only got one george in this block and that but that's a great george song beware of darkness you know you can't it would be on anybody's top 100 list 
Junk, I've always thought was beautiful. Sing Along Junk, I think, is just a little bit more beautiful. Uh, I love that uh, Love is Instrumentation play in the piano in, in the Sing Along Junk a little bit more than the regular Junk, but I think it's a great track. And in isolation, come on, come on, you know, <laughs> come on. Come on, man. <laughs> um, it's such a beautiful song, man. Um, in and temporary secretary, I've always considered it to be fun track. I know I've heard people say that the first time they heard that, doo -doo 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 -doo, and they were like, "Oh my God, what is this?" I remember the first time I heard it, and I'm like, "Where has this been all my life?" I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but then again, not the the you know the rest, some of the other part bits of the album I I don't necessarily care for, but I've always enjoyed that opening craziness of of temporary secretary. I don't know what it is. But but Paul did something right. I mean, sometimes he experiments, and sometimes I agree with it, and sometimes you know it's a miss. But um, but I think this is a very strong block uh, of tracks. All right, very good. Okay, I feel like I'm going to just be repeating a lot of what you guys have said. <laughs> Nobody told me, no brainer. It's got to be on um, the top 100. I don't know if I would rank it higher, but it's um, it's such a good solid rocker, and you know. When Milk and Honey first came out, we heard that these were not finished in the studio. It's obvious with Grow Old With Me, since it's just a demo. But I got so used to these recordings in the studio that I just accepted them this way. And nobody told me it could have worked just like that without doing any more work on it. It was fine the way it was. Yeah. So maybe they could have improved upon it. But I think it was just, you know, just perfect the way it came out. So uh, I've always loved Nobody Told Me. And like you said, uh kit the wordplay in there um i love it yeah very clever lyrics in that song there's nazis in the bath bathroom just below the stairs <laughs> you know seize the day i'm very happy that something really new is represented here on the list and it was one song that leaped out at me leaped out at me when mccartney 3 came out as something really catchy and um yeah, I, I do think that it's a good song. It's just that, like you all have been saying, there's other songs that I would rank higher from Paul's catalog. I'm glad it's on here just for acknowledging that Paul is still putting out worthwhile stuff. Back off Boogaloo, I think you have to put that somewhere in the top 100. I love not only the song, as simple a song as it is, but the whole production behind it and Ringo's drumming, especially at the very beginning and George's production on there and his guitar playing. Uh, Queenie Eye is another surprise on here. I like the song a lot and I think it works as, as a live song really yeah. well. Um, I just don't know if it's as memorable as so many other of McCartney's songs in his solo solo catalog. If If I was to pick a song from the new album, I'd probably pick early days. I think that's a far more memorable, strong song right there. Um, Bless You. I'm really glad it's on here. Um, what I love about Bless You is that it really has a, a light jazz feel to it. Much like what I've said about some of George Harrison's solo music, like right. Ruby or something like that, or Pure Smokey. It's very, uh, it's got that very soft jazz feel to it, which works so well the whole arrangement of the song and how personal the lyrics are, uh, which you touched on there, Joe. Um, so bad. I can't get into that song in depth here because I'd be giving away a lot of what I'd be saying later, but I wouldn't put so bad in the top 100. Okay. There's other love songs that Paul's done in his solo career that are far superior than so bad. And I know a lot of people love that song but I don't want to give away the songs that are not in the list. <laughs> okay, but I wouldn't have put that in the top 100. Beware of Darkness, agree with all of you. It could rank higher easily. It's a gem, and I think that not only did it get a lot of airplay when it first came out, it's still getting airplay, and lots of people are covering it. Cheryl Crow did a really nice version of it a few years ago that she played on the piano. Um, I'm glad to see that that song's getting more acknowledgement as a great George Harrison song. Junk is another nice one, although I would rank every night higher than junk. It's yeah, a, I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's yeah. a really nice melody, and I like the lyrics of it a lot. I may not have ranked it at 63, though. Isolation is 
one of each top tier Lennon right there. So deeply personal. It's it's not just that the lyrics are personal, but it's got that bare arrangement that the mm -hmm. Plessy band is. Yep. Um, and uh, temporary secretary. I'm glad it's on the list. I probably wouldn't have put it on there. I, I do love, like you said, Tom, that introduction, that loop that goes all throughout. It, it's so perfect for that song. And, um, you know, as a composition, it's a fun track. But again, there's so many other songs I would place higher than Temporary Secretary. Sometimes I wonder if Rob is trying to be um, diplomatic in making sure that there's something that's more recent on the list although temporary secretary is 1980 but you know to include queenie eye on there and seize the day maybe he's trying to you know please mm. all the parties here um although there's one major criticism that i will make at the end of our next show about this list um i wish there was a lot more more recent stuff but uh yeah so that's how i feel about those songs so now we're going to get to our final 10 songs. Yeah, let's remind everybody that joined late. We're only doing the first half. The one We're only doing 100 to 51 on this show. And in two weeks, we'll finish off the list with uh, 50 to number one. Yes. Yeah, this show is going to be close to two hours. And I don't think you want a four-hour show. For <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, we obviously cannot get to all of them in uh, in one show. Yeah. Okay, here we go. That's only when Peter Jackson's with us. Okay, That's right. <laughs> At number 60, one of the biggest surprises of them all. Loser's Lounge from Bukus of Blues from Ringo's Country album right there. Number 59, another surprise, Dara Dune from George Harrison. Another one of the bonus tracks from All Things Must Pass. Uh, 58 is Fine Line from Chaos and Creation in the Backyard from Paul McCartney. Number 57, Whatever Gets You Through the Night, John, with Elton John on there. Number 56, All Things Must Pass from George Harrison. You knew that had to be in there. Number 55, I'm Stepping Out from John, from Milk and Honey. Number 54, Put It There from Paul McCartney, from Flowers in the Dirt. 53, I Found Out from Plastic Ono Band. Notices a lot from Plastic Ono Band on here. 52, Little Willow. That's uh, Paul's tribute there to Ringo's first wife, Maureen. And 51, this Happy Christmas War is Over from John and Yoko. Okay. Number 60 through 51, we just mentioned there. Let's start this time with Tom. All right. Uh, I was glad, uh, I was happy to hear your enthusiasm for Loser's Lounge because that is my favorite album on Buku's, I mean, my favorite track off of Buku's of Blues, Loser's Lounge. I adore that track. Love it, love it, love it. Um, you know, again, you know, Dare Dune, although we did hear George uh, play it there when the Three Dolls were together in the Beatles anthology, um, you know, I'm, again, it's it just kind of, you know, surprised that he would have this on the list let alone that high on the list you know so um fine line i think is a great more modern a single from paul i think it's one of my favorite uh three favorite singles from paul during this whole you know 21st century um whatever gets you through the night i know you're on another number one track um again i don't know if i'd have it this high um but glad it's on the list because i know a lot of people like it and obviously uh rob likes it uh, I'm stepping out. Good track. Don't know if I'd have it on here. Uh, put it there. Good track. I don't know if I'd have it on here. <laughs> I found out. Good track. I don't know. If I There's a kind of theme on this on this on this block here. But um, the 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 one that I was really uh, the songs that I really love seeing on this block here was Little Willow. Uh, beautiful, beautiful song. Um, you know, it's you, it's the kind of track you get emotional to every time you hear it um all things must pass always 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 loved that song um glad that uh glad it got uh, released uh and, and you didn't get discouraged after the others didn't want to record it during the let it be uh sessions um but all kind of surprised by happy xmas um I, i'm glad it's here um 
and uh you know it, it's 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 a great is it you know i know there's the you know is it oh, that and, and that and, and wonderful christmas time i know sometimes you know competes you know but i think it's a i think it's worthy it's a very important song i think in john's canon and um uh, you know obviously you know john and yoko felt very strong about what they were singing uh in that song so i i feel like it, it is an important track that should be on anybody's top 100 list. Um, but uh, all in all, it's not the my favorite uh, block here, but there I think there's some really quality stuff in here. Like I said, All Things Must Pass, I think, is just phenomenal uh, song. Mm. Wish it was a little higher, but, uh, but all in all, you know, it's okay. All righty. Joe. All right, Losers Lounge is one of those that's absolutely stumped me with a WTF moment. I don't know what the hell that thing's doing on here at all. I know Tom Tom likes it, but I'm you know, I, I don't get it being on a 100. It's it's all right in the context of the album, but you know, uh, Buku's of Blues, but I don't know about here. The title track Buku's of Blues I might be more inclined to put on on this uh, list. Dara Dune I don't really, I don't really know it well enough, but from what I hear it in my mind, that's got no business being here either, in my opinion. Uh, fine line. I got to tell you, I love chaos and creation in the backyard, but in many ways, fine line is my least favorite track on it. Hmm. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't seem to fit the rest of the album as well to me for some reason. Maybe because it's just trying to be like more of a pop. Uh, hit maybe more of a hit hit single rather than a deeper and just getting into Paul's psyche like too much rain and uh, vanity the writing to Vanity Fair or all the other songs maybe that's why I don't know, too hard trying to be a, a hit or something I don't know what it is but I've never loved that song and even if I did think it was okay I don't think it belongs on the hundred mm. from my opinion okay. um, I've always had uh, mixed feelings on whatever gets you through the night. You know, I think Kit and I have talked about this many yeah. times, um, but it is John's first number one as a solo artist, you know, in his lifetime. Uh, only no, number one, right, in, in his lifetime that he had uh, experienced. And I do like it. I just don't love it as much as I think I should. But I think it belongs on the list. That's a song I might put on the list more because I think it, it really has a right to be on it more than personal fondness for it. Okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, all things must pass. Well, <laughs> genius! One of the greatest of all solo Beatles songs. It could be top ten. Should be top ten, maybe. But then, what? What else? You're gonna put everything in the top ten. and <laughs> still have ten slots. But I definitely love "All Things Must Pass" the song and the album. You know. Now I'm stepping out. I want to talk about that again. You know, the same thing I said before. I was a little hard on "Nobody Told Me." I agree with Ken, especially after hearing him explain it. That like, you know, it doesn't matter. If John uh, hadn't really finished it, um, nobody told me st still sounds great the way it was released, hmm. you know, I think. But when I'm stepping out, I think that one is, is, suffers a little bit from sounding like it's just a, a run through. That hmm. one is like kind of crude. I still like it hmm. when I listen to the record, but I would never be anywhere close to putting this on, on the top 100. I'm stepping out for me. Okay. Put it there is one of my very favorite songs off Flowers in the Dirt. Uh, it's a beautiful sentiment by Paul's dad, you know, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a, such a beautiful song with such good feeling to it. Um, I love that it's on the list. You know, I think it belongs here. Whether I, whether that high or not, I don't know, but I love that put it there is here. Um, I found out. Yeah, I like it. I don't I don't know, but I put that. I don't know if that'd be on my top hundred. It's a good rocking John. You know, but I don't know if I put it on the, the hundred list myself. Little Willow, <sighs> breathtaking, beautiful ode mm. uh, to uh, Maureen Starkey, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's a sad song, but it's a gorgeous song. One of the best songs off the album, A Flaming Pie. Don't think we want to get into this just now. Well, I'll save it for the next show because I was a little sore about something not being on here. Uh -oh. Is all I'm going to say in its place, but uh, uh, yeah, Little Willow, it's good to see it. some love for it. It's a worthy song. A happy Christmas, war is over. It's become a classic. It's become an annual tradition. 
uh, it, it, you know, I think it said in, it, when I was reading about it too that in John's again in John's lifetime it wasn't that big a deal. The song it was afterward, after he passed, that it became, you know, a, a, a staple pretty much more than it was before. But I, I love it. I think it's a superior of of the two the Christmas songs. Not that it's a competition thing. I love Wonderful Christmas Time too, for its simplicity and you know. Festive feeling. I like them both, mm-hmm. but I, th- I like Happy Christmas a little more. Glad to see it getting a place on the list it's so high too. You know, maybe a little too high, but it's on the list, and that's good enough. Yep. And what's wrong with that? <laughs> what's what's wrong with that? I'd like to know. <laughs> I think I heard that somewhere. <laughs> Get your turn. Uh- Okay. I was kind of impressed with Loser's Lounge being on here because first of all, you're just like, okay, Rob, Rob knows his stuff. He's yeah. he's he's digging deep here. Okay. Um, and yeah, this was kind of a um you know, it, it does show Ringo's uh, that he Rob needed to put some country Ringo in here. And he I mean he already did with Sunshine Life for me, but this gets even more country and and uh, yeah, this was one of the the good uh, good tracks off of Boku Blues. Um, put it there. That was a great surprise. I, I'm so glad he put this in. This was one of the real highlights off of Flowers in the Dirt. So I, I was very pleased uh, to see that here. Um, All Things Must Pass. I mean, as we've been saying, I mean, of course, a classic. Uh, I think that was, in fact, ranked too low. I think that that should have mm. gone way higher. <laughs> I mean, that is a, a signature track of George Harrison's obviously not just because it's the title of the album but mm. but it's just a classic I mean you can quote lyrics from that song right. uh, just incredible songwriting uh Little Willow also as we've said great to see that um get gets uh, get the spotlight too I mean that's uh, you know incredibly sad but uh but just a beautiful example of songwriting melody um just a just a gorgeous gorgeous song so i'm glad to see that get uh, get the spotlight um i mean and, and i'm stepping out i i'm a little perplexed as to why you would rank that above nobody told me i mean yeah. this is yeah i mean I, you know on something else it's it's good but i i mean it's not as fully formed as nobody told me and and it's a you know, it's a fun song. It's kind of a an example of what John was going through, you know, and, I mean, talking about how, you know, he was sick of staying in the house and I mean, he loved being a father and all that he needed to get out. He needed to, you know, great, great song. Hmm. But um, it's just not on a par with nobody told me. I mean, so I think that's kind of odd to rank it above that. Um, sorry. <laughs> I mean... I, I don't get it. Um, uh, you know, borrowed time should be on here yeah. instead of that. Mm. I mean, yeah. I in my opinion, but but we'll get to that next time. Um, but uh, but anyway, so you know, some quibbles in this uh, this section, but there are some gems that I'm really glad that that he's you know showing showing some love for here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, great comments all around from the three of you. Uh, My opinion of these uh, 10 songs, Loser's Lounge is a case where it's really a very good song and Ringo fits the song so well. We've all talked about how well his voice suits country music. There are certain songs on Bukusa Blues where it really works well. Loser's Lounge is one of those songs. Um, I've always liked the title track to Bukusa Blues. I've loved Fastest Growing Heartache in the West. I could probably put that on my list if I'm going to put a country song on there from that album, as well as $15 Draw, which is a real fun track as well. But, you know, I don't know if I would rank Loser's Lounge at number 60 on this list. If it was to be on there, it would probably be in the bottom of the of the top 100. And agreed. Like I said before, there's there's a lot of more recent stuff that doesn't get the attention here on, on this list. Um, but I'm glad that something that is a country song from Ringo is on here. There should be something, one song at least, 
that's a country song from Ringo that's on this list. And I'm glad that Loser's Lounge, that's that's an excellent choice. Just wouldn't put it as high as 60. Dara Dune is another one that was a, a shocker in a way. I liked when, uh, you know, the three Beatles got together in the anthology and George played the song. And um, and then you have it now as a bonus track on All Things Was Pass. It's one of those really pleasant. And I love when when George does it on, on acoustic guitar or ukulele. You know, because it's a, a chant-like song, which he's so good at doing. And sometimes just the simplicity of acoustic guitar or a ukulele and George is so wonderful. And, um, you know, I like Dara Dune, but I, like we've been saying a lot, there's other songs I'd place higher. Fine Line is another song that I've liked a lot. Um, Chaos and Creation in the Backyard is a, you know, pretty much a perfect album. Um, I could see why Fine Line was chosen as a single, and I understand what you're saying, Joe, about it may not fit as well with the rest of the album, because Chaos and Creation is kind of like a plastic on a band. It's, you know, uh, bearing your soul to the world and, and having a lot of very deeply personal songs, and Fine Line was more like, you know, a pop tune with really good lyrics, too, but meant to be more commercial, I think, than maybe the other songs. Yeah. And, um chaos and create yep. i i i wouldn't mind it being in the top 100 but i would probably put that closer to the bottom whatever gets you through the night never had a problem with always loved the song um you know i think in the in the whole john lennon canon when it comes to the hits i would definitely rank like instant karma and mind games higher than than whatever gets you through the night absolutely you know, see where where those songs rank on the list but I felt that because it was a number one song and it's got so much energy and the interplay between him and, and Elton John on the record, I think it really works. Uh, I've always loved it from the get go and that's never changed. Um, it had to be somewhere in the, in the, the hot 100, the hot 100, the top 100. <laughs> the hot well, 100. Sure. Can I ever get billboard out of my brain? <laughs> You're not at work, Ken. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all things was pass. I agree with all of you. It could be in the top 10 easily. It's one of George's yeah. greatest songs of all time, not just melodically, the lyrics of it, so philosophical. Um, and the whole production that's on the album of that song is just great. I wouldn't touch, I wouldn't change a hair about all things must pass. Love Phil Spector's production. Love everything about it um it it definitely deserves to be much higher on this list than 56 i'm stepping out i definitely agree with all of you how could i'm stepping out rank higher than woman or watching the wheels okay. or nobody told me i like i'm right. stepping out it's a really good song i'd probably have it more at the bottom of the of the top 100 um put it there is another one i like it's a pleasant song i've always kind of wished that paul put a little bit more effort into the songwriting and maybe wrote another verse, made it a little bit longer. It ends too, too soon for me. Um, but if you love a really great McCartney acoustic song with a great melody, put it there if it's the bill. But again, I probably put that at the bottom of the 100. If I put it there at all, you know, there's a lot of other songs and flowers in the dirt that didn't make it. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I would put, I don't know if I would put, put it there, put it, I don't know if I would put it there. <laughs> uh, why well that was so bad i know oh it was. no <laughs> okay uh i found out i love the song i love everything on plastic on a band but it's kind of i found out and well 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 are very similar to me and they're not as strong they're not part of my dna the way the rest of the album is right um, i probably wouldn't have put i found out in there and there's a lot of lennon songs that i would put that didn't make the list little willow here's another case of if you didn't know the song was a tribute to maureen starkey would you like it as much i was going to yeah. mention that too you, yeah I, I knew you were going to think of that <laughs> i think it's a really yeah. pleasant song it's got a beautiful yeah. melody great lyrics everything yeah. about it is wonderful yeah. But I think it probably is elevated just a little bit because of. Right. Uh, 
I can I can I can honestly say honestly say that when I, I did get the album, I did not know, and I loved it immediately. Yeah, yeah, I think it's I would have liked yeah. it a lot anyway. But it's a beautiful uh, song. In fact, well, even it didn't necessarily have to be about Maureen. It could be about any anybody who, right. you know, right. had, had exactly. cancer. Lyrically, yeah. it could work for yeah, right. Like, Anybody. It still would affect me, but I think I think yeah, I, don't, I do think even more so the fact that I know who it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And "Happy Christmas War Is Over" is a no-brainer. Yeah. One of the greatest Christmas songs of all time. Mm -hmm. I actually, thought you were going to say something different when you were talking about it. Tom. Oh. I'm not even going to bring it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's such a memorable song. Everything about "Happy Christmas War Is Over" is perfect. Love hearing Yoko's voice on it. It's the only time yeah. when people who are not Yoko fans can accept Yoko's. That's singing. right. Mm -hmm. I like the version even before they add the choir on there, and it's just this yep. version, just John and Yoko mm -hmm. singing it. There's a lot of different versions that have come out. Yeah, you know, of Happy Christmas, and um, you know, it's it's definitely one of the all time classic, more modern, from the rock era, mm -hmm. Christmas songs. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. Okay, so we made it through the first half. That was perfect. Yeah, perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, we want to know what you guys think of our comments about these 50 songs, and then we'll regroup in a couple of weeks and go from 50 to number one. Yeah. Mm. Now, you might want to like that element of surprise and not check it out online or look for it and <laughs> try to figure out what the number one song would be. An actual truth even though we did our little joke at the beginning of the show for April Fool's Day, if I had to come up with my top three, I'd have a tough time picking my number one song. Yeah, that's a challenge. So, you know, not only is this catalog so massive, but it's so rich in great songs. You know, we've been truly blessed with this solo Beatle catalog. And um, there's so many songs I could rank at number one. It's yeah, not great. And I whenever... Agree. Any long list, you know, if I was to put together my my top 100, is number 75 going to be that much better than 70? <laughs> you know, are you really going to weigh the two of them? You know, how do you it's do hard. like this? It's it's not an easy task to perform. So, um, but this it's not. I, I see where you're coming from, Ken, but I do think that we do put some sides of song some songs to the side where we do think that they are like the best of the best i do think that we do feel there are other songs that are just a step above other songs you True. know see it's a lot easier for me i could just off the top of my head tell you my favorite solo lennon song my favorite mccartney lennon well there's two that are tied right. favorite george favorite ringo right but overall pick one as yeah. number one, it's not easy. No, mm -mm. It don't come easy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and no. We all paid our dues. Yep. <laughs> oh, I have. Yep. <laughs> now that's why I'm singing the blues. Yes. Right. <laughs> all right. So before we uh, end the show, let's give a quick wrap up of what we're all up to. Let's start this time with Tom. All right. Thank you, Ken. Um, you know, as usual, busy as usual. Um, two weeks ago, or I say like two and a half weeks ago, we, you know, on Two Legs, we did this, but uh, we just mainly gave our thoughts on the Paul songs that Rob picked uh, in the 100 uh, countdown. So that was a lot of fun. Got a good, a lot of good responses on that. So thank you. Uh, last week, we did um, a, a new kind of like interview series where we take an interview that's on YouTube and we can we'll we'll watch it and we'll critique uh, things that Paul says, whether or not that it's like kind of like a new story or, uh, you know, stories that he's been telling for a long time or, you know, because I, we really find that there's a lot of great um candid video or interviews that paul did during the 80s and we did one uh, that it's called meet paul mccartney from 1980 tim rice was the uh the guy that conducted the interview and this was a uk um interview and um you know he's mainly talking about the mccartney 2 album and uh you know and it, and it goes off in different areas uh, of his life and career so that was a lot of fun doing that and then this this past saturday we started a brand new series called the iconic song series and um, that is going to be with Alan Cozen and Adrian Sinclair eventually. 
um, we wanted to do something with the legacy, the McCartney legacy guys. Um, we we thought about this, um, you know, just you know, talking about his most iconic songs, um, going through the McCartney legacy book, and and is also going through the lyrics book too, and seeing what Paul has to say, and kind of like, does he contradict anything, or or was there kind of like the story that was hit there his story, and is there another story, you know, and kind of just you know talking about the song from 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 conception to release. Um, you know, and how we feel about it. The song, is it iconic? You know, and uh, we started with maybe I'm amazed and uh, hopefully you guys will check it out. And then the response for that has been really good as well. So thank you for watching. Um, please go to our YouTube channel, Two Legs of Paul McCartney podcast and subscribe. So thank you very much. Okay. That is all for now. <laughs> that is all. Yeah. Uh, Joe, how about you? All right, folks. Uh, on my main channel, me and Mr. Mayo, I have a couple of videos. They've been kind of controversial I put up. The first one I did was uh, 10 Beatles songs that I like, but I'm tired of them. And boy, I got a lot of, a lot of uh -oh. reactions to that, let me tell you. And then, uh, to be fair, I after that I did a video that said, you know, 10 Beatles songs that are well known, like the more popular ones, that I never tire of. You know, just by hearing them so many times and things like that. That's yeah. the key, though, with them, you know, because I could easily say stuff like, oh, I never tire of not a second time or, hmm. you know, little child or something like that. I'm talking about ones that, you know, you know, the ones I mean, the ones that are really played a lot that are the, the biggest Beatles songs. So also on my mean Mr. Mayo channel, every Saturday I do a live stream at uh, about 4 p.m. Eastern, just a Q&A. If you want to talk about anything on my ch <coughs> channel, excuse me, here it comes. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm trying to get over the coughing. That's okay. All right. I have another channel, movie channel, called Mayo's Movie Mayhem. And on that channel, I've been really getting into Sherlock Holmes lately. Basil Rathbone doing reviews over there on those movies, just starting them. So Sherlock Holmes, a lot of older movies in general. Also... Tom and I usually do a movie talk. Discuss it, Tom, while I cough, will you? <laughs> usually, yes, usually on Wednesday nights, uh, uh, Joe and I, we get together on his movie uh, YouTube channel and uh, around 9 p.m. Eastern time and... We, you know, we'll we'll talk about movies that we've just seen, movies that we just purchased. Uh, we'll take uh, questions from and, and comments from from the list, the viewers, and uh, we we tend to have a you know pretty good time. We have sometimes we'll have some interesting conversations. Just depends on you know on what comes up, and uh, have a good time doing it with Joe. Excuse me, folks. Sorry about that. It pays to buy the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah. So that's 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 me. Mayo's Movie Mayhem for movies and TV. Having a rough time, Joe. <laughs> rough ride here. I, I like that song, Rough Ride. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> Kid, what's Next. going on? Okay, well, uh, first of all, um, thank you so much to all of you who tuned in tonight and to, who have already subscribed to our YouTube channel. And of course, uh, those of you who have not subscribed yet, well, what are you waiting for? Uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, yep, just right down there as Ken is pointing. Um, and uh, please tell your, your friends and neighbors and everybody to subscribe. Uh, you can also like our Facebook page and uh, you will be then notified of any uh, new episodes coming up and we post stuff there as well. So you can uh, check that out. You can follow us on Twitter at TalkMoreTalk1. Um, you can email us at TalkMoreSoloTalk at gmail.com with feedback, any uh, story ideas you may have, um, you know, any topics you might like us to uh, tackle. Uh, we will, uh, you know, consider uh, suggestions. You might just might see an idea right here. Uh, you can also find us on the web at talkmoretalk.com. Uh, and you can listen to the audio version of this broadcast at uh, on pretty much any podcasting platform you can think of. We're, we're everywhere. You can't get away from us. So uh, so go ahead and listen there. And uh, please rate uh, rate us and uh, comment on us uh, if, uh, if you would like and uh, subscribe there as well. 
Uh, okay, as far as what I am up to, um, I was a guest recently on our Fred, uh, friend Ed Chen and uh, Martin Quibell's show when they was fab uh we had a fun april fool's day episode it just dropped today in fact where we take you back to the wonderful 70s variety show years you remember those we visited them a bit on this show and uh, we went back to a an incredible show <laughs> called the beatles forever from 1977 um it's on youtube you've got to see it if you want to see Anthony Newley performing Within You, Without You with a bunch of stone-looking extras <laughs> surrounding him, you've got to see this. Uh, Paul Williams is on it. Uh, Tony Randall. Honey pie. Yep, you got it. You've seen it. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Oh, it's insane. It's insane. So go watch it and then check out our broadcast where we discuss it. It's It's just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So uh, so that's on uh, When They Was Fab. You can find that on Facebook. It's on um, uh, Zencaster. Uh, you can find it there. And uh, I'll post the link on uh, my Facebook page and ours. Um, there's also new episodes of Toppermost of the Poppermost. Uh, we're into March now. And um, you can hear more of me pontificating on who should and shouldn't cover Stardust um, on that episode as well. <laughs> we talk about other things too. Don't worry. Lots of other things. But you can hear me uh, do that as well. Uh, but uh, but go check us out, toppermostofthepoppermost.net. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of great episodes up there. And uh, I think that's it for now. So, you know, Queen of Beatles Media, I'm everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> Poor Ringo. <laughs> As for me, if any of you would like to write to me directly at my email, just go to everylittlething at att.net. You can also friend me on Facebook at Ken Michaels. I don't always mention that, but please do. Um, on my own YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels Radio, I just did an interview with our friend Luca Parasi, who you know for being the author of Paul McCartney, Music is Ideas, The Stories Behind the Songs, Volume 1, 1970 to 1989. And we did an entire show on Press to Play. We're going to be doing a show on Flowers in the Dirt very soon. And the other stuff in between the Phil Ramone material and the Russian album and David Foster stuff. That's all coming soon. I also did an interview with Al Sussman. Um, I hope you all know what this uh, this coming week is in terms of anniversaries, because it was 60 years ago this week when the Beatles occupied the top five positions on the Billboard Hot 100. See, I knew it was in the back of my mind somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, you know, an incredible feat. And we talked about that. I hope you all know what the top five was, but we talk about it and all the other songs from the Beatles that were on the charts and what it was like, not only that week, but certainly the first half of 1964 when the Beatles just dominated everything on the singles and album charts here in the U S. So both those interviews, Luca Parasi and Al Sussman's on my YouTube channel, Ken Michaels radio, please subscribe there. Just made it to 1500 subscribers. Thank you all very much. Great. Uh, on things we said today, my other podcast show, we just did a show catching up <laughs> because of Al Cozen, uh, Alan Cozen, um, taking about a month and a half off from the show to finish the McCartney legacy volume two with Adrian Sinclair. So we finally started talking about the red and blue albums for the remixes and Bad on the run, the underdubbed mixes. There'll be a new show next week with Dana Klausner. She's the author of a new book called Beatlemania Lives On, Super Fans in the 21st Century. So that'll be sometime next week. That's going to be posted um, on my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. Always Beatles Trivia Contest, where you can win so many great prizes, lots of incredible Beatle books, like the McCartney Legacy Volume 1, like Ken Womack's incredible book, on uh, on mal evans living the beatles legend that's at kenmichaelsradio.com and for those of you that want to check out my syndicated radio show every little thing 
please do so by going to WFDU's website. That's Fairly Dickinson University's website in New Jersey. And um, even though they air my show during the week, you can catch the shows the last two weeks as archived shows on their website and each show they hold for two weeks. So just go to WFDU.FM for that. Look up their archive shows, type in every little thing, and you can listen anytime you want, anytime at all. And there you go. So this has been a tremendous show. Thanks to all you guys for watching. We very much appreciate it. And we've said it before, but if you have any ideas for us of shows that you'd like to see us do, please write to us here. Okay? We'd uh, very much appreciate that. And um, this has been great. For the first half of Rolling Stone's Top 100 Solo Beatles Songs. We'd like to wish you all a happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> and for Kid O'Toole, Tom Hunyadi, and Joe Mayo, I'm Ken Michael saying to all of you, go on, get yourself another fool. <laughs> See you next time.